Hi, we are here for book read number 17. Um, can't believe we've done this many. Um, from now on, uh, starting in September, these book reviews will be released on the last Sunday of every month. Um, I'll put more notices out for that, but for now, um, let's just get started with these books. We are going to look at Lottie Laserstein and, and almost said Sigmund Freud, Lucian Freud. <laughs> let's get started. Okay, so I am super excited to share this book with you guys. Um, um, Lottie Laserstein is a uh, cut this part out, Luke. <laughs> okay, starting over now. Okay, I'm super excited to share this book with you guys. Um, I did not know a lot about Lottie Laserstein until. Uh, I heard a lecture on her work. Um, it was actually on her and another artist, but since I don't have a book on the other artist, we won't, we won't talk about that. Um, so, Laserstein was uh, born in East Prussia. She was a German artist, really, um, of a Jewish background, and she, um, though I hear she considered herself Protestant, but um, that won't be important until I get a little bit more into her life. But uh, but she, she was a really rem remarkable woman. She studied with uh, Eric Wolfsfeld. Um, apologies for butchering that name. This is a painting of his. Um, but he was a student of a student of Menzel, I believe. Um, and it's a little bit confusing. Um, but yeah, so basically, for anyone who knows uh, Adolf Menzel's work, you know he was an amazing draftsman, and I do believe that carried on in um, his, you know, teaching legacy, so carried all the way down to, um, Lottie Laserstein. Um, I also apologize for any of my bad pronunciations. I did not have time to do more research into the name pronunciations, but, uh, just bear with me. So, some really, um, amazing drawings in here. There's not a ton, but there are some, a few really amazing drawings, um, in this book, which is always kind of nice to see. Um, so yeah, so I'll just keep going until we get to the catalog. But um, also, the reason I say that it was, you know, she was of Jewish background, but she um, did not consider herself Jewish. The reason it's important is because she, uh, so she lived, um, she she lived she lived a long time, but she lived during the time of World War II. And obviously she was German, so she managed to actually get out of Germany. Um, if I'm remembering correctly from the lecture, it was because she had an art exhibit in Sweden, um, and she managed to she managed to escape and, and be um, and not get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and I think the reason it was important she considered herself Protestant is because she actually. I think this was pretty later in life, so I'm, I'm jumping around on my timelines a bit. But she was taken in, um, she taught art at some point in her life at a Catholic girls' school. Uh, so she, and they, and they really took her in, the, the Catholic community. But, uh, but it's really, she did amazing work, like I said, she lived a long time. Um, she, I don't know if she did like particularly a lot of work for all that, I know she, she did die impoverished. Um, so again, sorry for jumping around on my timelines, but she just really, she, I just, I, I love her work. I really do. Um, I, she started, um, again, all from the lecture I heard, because um, I haven't had a chance to read this book um, in full. Um, she started her paintings with a very precise drawing, um, and I feel like a lot of times you can really read that. So she really just did a lot of amazing things, I think. Uh, you know, I've never seen any of her paintings in person, but I love the texture that um, that a lot of them appear to have. Um, I know one one day I'll get to see her work in person. <laughs> um, but as far as this book goes, I feel like it represents her work really well. Um, and to be honest, I think everybody should just know about her because I can't believe I it took me so long to find out about her. Um, but yeah, so keep going. She, um, she did a lot of these things. She lived, I think, for the rest of her life in Sweden. Um, I believe she married a, a Swedish gentleman to get, uh, to get citizenship. So now I'm 
Now I'm not as sure on that, so you can take that with a grain of salt, but yeah. So keep going. Um, she did a lot of paintings of one woman, and I'm not even going to attempt to say that woman's name. I will put it in the description, but um, it's the woman that is, uh, she's in a lot of her paintings, and, and oftentimes nude, and they had a close friendship, and uh, so that's just a really cool tidbit into her work, whenever you see one person painted over and over again. Um, yeah, and this book just ends with a chronology, so I will put a little bit more in the description. Um, but yeah, just go out and get yourself this book, which is really amazing, and you won't regret it. Okay, so now we are going to look at this book on Lucian Freud. Um, admittedly, I am not as familiar with Freud's work. I don't think I've ever seen any of it in person, not that I can recall anyways. Um, in fact, the the chance, the one chance that I thought I would have to see his work in person, um, or at least an exhibit on him, uh, was supposed to be over my spring break of this, uh, of 2020, this last year. And uh, as anyone who knows when spring break usually occurs, you'll know that um, everything was shut by, shut down by then. Um, but it was an exhibit. It, it was an exhibit on uh, his self-portraits, um, as this book is. Um, it's a it's a catalog for his uh, for an exhibit on his self-portraits. I don't know if it's actually the same one because this one took place in London. But um, but it is a great book. I do really like it. I have not gotten a chance to read it, um, but I do think it's a m more recently published one. So potentially the same, but also maybe not can't be. I am not positive. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I said, I have I have not read this book, um, so any information I have on Freud comes from a lecture that I actually was able to listen to um, on his work, and or on him. And um, you know, I learned he was a, he was the grandson of Sigmund Freud, um, and uh, which maybe helps explain his eccentric nature. Um, but, I do like this book, um, back to just talking about the book, I think that it does a great job of spanning um, Freud's years. So it starts from very early work that I would have never known was Lucian Freud's to much later work that, you know, is, uh, you would not be able to mistake for anyone but Sigmund Freud. <laughs> Sorry, Lucian Freud. I'm gonna keep doing that, I apologize. <laughs> um, you would not be able to mistake the work for any else. Um, other than Lucian Freud, he had a very distinctive style. Um, admittedly, I don't think I'm a fan of it. I, um, I whisper, I don't know if the microphone will pick that up, but he painted very thick, and I tend to struggle with paintings that are done quite so thickly. I don't know why. It just has never appealed to me, but Regardless, this is not about me, it's about the book, and I feel like it does a great job of representing his work. Um, everybody says you need to see his work in person, so maybe I just have missed out on that, that thus far. But, anyway, so, he was an interesting guy. <laughs> he, uh, the closest bonds I think he ever forged with people were, um, were in his studio for people that sat for him. So obviously you won't see quite as much of that in this book since it's all self-portraits, but he did do self-portraits with other people occasionally, so thought it'd be interesting to bring up. Um, I think it's interesting, his, he had a very close friendship with uh, Francis Bacon, and so that's kind of interesting to see the impact that, you know, they might have had on one another. Um, then yeah, we're all really odd guy. But <laughs> it's a pretty short book, so obviously we're at the end, ending in a chronology. But I do feel like, for me, it was a good starter book on Freud, so hope it helps. Alright, as always, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I've loved getting to do these weekly book review videos with you guys. Um, and while part of me is sad that we will no longer be doing them every week, um, I'm super excited to hopefully be able to deliver much more information-packed, in-depth book review videos um, moving forward uh, since I'll have more time to do the research. So as always, let me know if there are any artists that you'd like to see books on or just would like to hear more about because, um, yeah, I just can't wait to keep sharing information with you guys. Right?